Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part two of the Vogue 9345 sew along. So today we're going to be assembling the skirt and putting together the bodice. And we're going to assemble the skirt early so that we can let the bias drop for as long as possible. So let's get started. Okay, as ever I am going to start in the middle of the instructions because I want to sew the skirt together first because it, some of it is cut on the bias and I would like to give this the longest opportunity I can to hang up to see if it, the bias drops and that if I need to trim it. The first instruction for the skirt is stitch skirt back sections together at centre back and then stitch skirt front sections to skirt back at sides. Now guess what, I'm going to do both of those with a French seam. I have the back seam pinned together wrong sides together and I'm going to sew this at a quarter of an inch all the way down. Okay so in this mass of fabric I have sewn the back centre seam together at a quarter of an inch and I've also sewn the side panels on at a quarter of an inch. As you probably know I like to do as many of the same thing as I can before I have to get up and go to the ironing board. So I have sewn all three seams, I'm going to trim them down to one eighth of an inch and then I can go and press them. Okay, so once I trimmed off the excess of the seam allowance, I have gone and ironed it flat and then I have ironed it with the right sides together. So you can see here there's like a just under an eighth of an inch of the seam allowance left and it's been ironed flat and then ironed with the right sides together. So I'm now going to sew this at three eighths of an inch to enclose that raw edge and give me a nice French seam. And I'm going to do that for both side seams and the back seam. I have sewn the seam at 3 eighths of an inch or just under 3 eighths of an inch and that has enclosed all of the raw edges so we have a nice neatly finished seam. I'm now I'm going to go and press these. The two side seams I'm going to press towards the back and the centre seam I'm just going to press to one side so that everything lies nice and flatly. Then I'm going to hang this up on a pinchy hanger, you know a skirt hanger, so that it, the bias can drop as much as it wants to, hopefully not too much, over the next couple of days. Now that we have got the skirt sewn we can go to the, f the first instruction which is to trim the corners of the interfacing as shown, fuse interfacing to wrong sides of each matching fabric section following manufacturer's instructions. So I've interfaced one collar, the two front facings for the bodice and the two front facings for the skirt. So the next thing that we're going to do is sew the dart in the bodice front. I'm going to be following step number three because I am doing the C cup. So I'm going to stitch dart in bodice front, trim to five eighths of an inch and press open. I'm actually not going to trim it because I don't want any raw edges on the inside of my dress so I'm just going to press mine down. So before I move remove my pattern piece I want to make sure that I've transferred over all the notches and markings. So we've got the small circle and the large circle there that I'm going to need to transfer through and then also the dart. So I've snipped into all of my notches and I also snip into the legs of my darts to show where they will end and what I'm going to do is take a pin and put it through the point of the dart and I'm going to do the same with the small circle and the large circle and I'm going to put a pin through all of those and then I'm going to take a marking pen, I'm using a friction, friction pen but you want to double check that your pen or whatever marking tool you, you use will show up on your fabric and also will be removed, removable from your fabric so test your marking pen on a scrap first. So I'm going to peel back the layers, I'm going to mark in the point of the dart and like I say the small circle and the large circle as well. Once you've got your darts marked you then want to pin the two legs of the dart together and you want to make sure that you're going through that and then we're going to sew them so you're going to backstitch at the start and then you're just going to sew off at the end because you don't want to backstitch here it'll make your dart very very pointy we're going to tie the loose threads in a knot so you want to leave yourself a nice long thread tail Okay, so I've sewn my dart and I have just sewn off the end and left the thread tails, so I need to tie these in a knot. So I'm just going to tie a couple of overhand knots like this. Not too tight, you don't want to, again, make the end of the dart too pointy. I'm just going to trim off the ends of the thread and that's the dart sewn. So I'm going to press this dart towards the waist seam because I, it's not too large of a dart so I don't think I need to cut it and then 
press it flat and like, like I say I don't want a raw edge on the inside of this dress because this dress is not lined. So the next step is number four which is to stay stitch the side of the bodice front. The reason that they want you to stay stitch is that you so that you can clip into the seam allowance to make the side front bodice piece match up with the side front piece nicely. Now again I'm going to be sewing mine with a French seam so I'm actually not going to do the stay stitching because of the way that I'm going to sew the seam I don't need to clip into it to make it form around the curve so I'm going to pin it all together and show you what I mean. Okay so I have the front bodice pinned to the side bodice with a lot of pins. I've matched up the notches first then I made sure that the fullness of the dart was pinned into place and then I have eased in the pins all the way around. So I'm going to sew this at 3 eighths of an inch first I'm going to trim it, press it, and then I'm going to sew it at a quarter of an inch for the finished measurement, which will give me a nice French seam on a princess seam. And I have done a separate tutorial about how to French seam princess seams, and you can find that here. Okay, so I've sewn my first line of stitching. When you're sewing, you want to sew with the bodice front on top and the bodice side front on the underneath, because this bodice front is the one that's going to have the excess fabric, and this is where you could get puckers. You just want to take your time and sew slowly around the princess seam. So I'm now going to trim this down to eight, an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go and press it and then I can sew it at a quarter of an inch to finish off the princess French seam. I'm going to do that for both bodices. The other thing to note is that you will end up with a little bit of your side front bodice poking out of the top here and that is how it looks in the picture as well so that is intentional. Okay so I have pressed the seam with the right sides together. I'm now gonna sew along the princess seam at a quarter of an inch to finish off this French seam and we're going to press that seam once it's done towards the side front. Once you have pressed your seam towards the side front panel, you should end up with two panels that look like this. So we have our dart finished, our princess seam nicely enclosed in a French seam and everything's looking great from the front. We're now going to repeat the exact same process on the back bodice and again I'm not going to stay stitched because I won't want to clip into my seam allowance to curve around the edge because again I'm going to sew it with a French seam. So I have sewn the side back panels to the back panel at 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to trim this down, I'm going to press it and then I'm going to sew it again at a quarter of an inch to finish the French seam on the princess seam and I've done that for both side back panels. So I'm going to trim, press and sew again. Okay, so once you've sewn the remainder of the French seam for the princess seam at the back, you want to press the seam over to the side back panels and I've done that for both of them. So the next step is to pin one yoke front and back section to upper edge of bodice back, stitch, press seam towards yoke. Note, remaining yoke and front back section will be used as a facing. I think I'm still going to be able to burrito this, but we need to get the collar and facings in first. So I'm going to see how the burrito method will work. If not, we can definitely sew it down by hand, which is what they ask for in the pattern. So the next thing that I'm going to do then is going to get one of my yoke pieces and I'm going to sew it, match up the notches and sew it to the top of the back panel that we've just made. Then I'm going to sew it to the front shoulder seams of the two front panels and I'm going to do that at 5 eighths of an inch with a normal seam because it's all going to be enclosed later when we put on the other yoke. Okay so I have sewn the yoke to the back panel and also to the shoulder seams of the two front panels. I'm now going to press the seam allowance towards the yoke for both the shoulders from the front and the back panel, the top of the back panel from the back and trim off all of my loose threads. Okay, so we're moving on to the collar and facing. So this time it wants us to stay stitch neck edge of bodice between the large circles, which we marked earlier. So I'm going to do that at half an inch the whole way around. So we're now moving on to making the collar. So step 11 is stitch collar sections together between large circles, leaving notched edge open and trim. I'm going to sew all the way around the collar at 5 eighths of an inch. I am going to mark my pivot points in at the two corners so that I get them nice and pointy and I am going to sew all the way around, trim it off the excess including at the corners and turn it through so I can press it. Okay I think you can just about make it out there but I marked in my pivot point by drawing the seam allowance in 5 eighths of an inch away from both raw edges and the way I like to do corners is I reduce my stitch length around about here to 1.5 and then 
it sounds weird, but I take one diagonal stitch across the point rather than pivoting right on the point, as I find that gives me a pointier point when I turn it through. And then my reduced stitch length to about here, put it back to my normal 2.5 and then finish off sewing the seam to the large circle, which is what that blue dot is there. So I've done that for both sides. I'm now going to trim off all the excess and trim close to the corner so that I can turn my points out and get them nice and pointy. And then I'm gonna go and press. Trimmed off all the excess. I have cut my seam allowance down to half along the long edge. And then I've made sure that I've trimmed very close to my corners so that they can get nice and pointy. I have left the seam allowance intact closer to the point where I'm turning it through just so that I don't have to deal with any tricksy little bits of seam allowance wanting to poke out. So I'm gonna turn this through and I'm going to press it. Okay, so once I've turned it and pressed it, I need to baste the raw edges together. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm gonna do that all the way along there at 3 eighths of an inch, because I just need to make sure that they stay shut and that the line of stitching is not visible where the on the seam allowance or into the actual part of the garment. So 3 eighths of an inch in the seam allowance and I'm just gonna use my normal length of stitch because it's not basting that we need to remove. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon.